housing not only includes the physical structure which provides the shelter it also includes the immediate surroundings and the related community services in fact the who has coined a term residential environment which has been defined as the physical structure that man uses and the environment of that structure which includes all the necessary services and facilities etc which are required for the physical and mental health and the social well being of the family and the individual goals of housing what do we desire from a healthful house these are it should provide shelter and should provide adequate space for family life like cooking eating meeting etc and the provision of these facilities have been shown to impact to increase the individual productivity and to improve the family stability the housing should provide easy access to community facilities like hospitals schools shopping areas places of worship etc the housing should be such that is encourages the occupants to participate in the community life and to be able to give and receive help in the times of need housing is also a type of investment the who has laid down certain criteria when these criteria is are fulfilled the housing can be considered as healthful housing the house should provide physical shelter it should provide adequate space for various family activities like cooking sleeping washing etc it is designed in such a manner that it prevents the spread of communicable diseases for example the ventilation is adequately addressed it protects from pollution and is safely constructed and maintained in a such a way that foreign parts or a protruding corners do not injure anybody the housing encourages personal and community developments promotes social relationships and is in tune with the ecological principles and by assuring all these criteria it promotes the mental health of the occupant to achieve healthful housing some standards need to be recommended some housing standards these are laid down and differ from country to country and region to region depending upon the culture of the place the climate of the place and the socio economic status of the population in india these have been recommended by the environmental hygiene committee set up by the ministry of health government of india according to the standards the site of the house should be elevated from the surroundings so as to protect from floods and should have independent access to a street of adequate width should be away from breeding places of mosquitoes and flies and from pollution and traffic the surroundings should be pleasing and the soil on which the building is to be built should be dry and safe for the foundation for that the subsoil water should be at least below 10 feet and the soil which is made by dumping the refuse is not a satisfactory site for at least 20 to 25 years of dumping a setback is recommended by the housing committee a setback is an open area all around the house this is for the purpose of proper lighting and ventilation in the house and for the same purpose it is recommended that not more than 1/3 of the total land area should be built up in rural areas and in urban areas this built up area can be allowed up to 2/3 of the total land area this is because the land is costly in urban area regarding the floor 
the floor should be pakka and should be impermeable so as it is easy to wash and to keep clean the surface should be smooth and free from crevices to prevent breeding of insects and to prevent harborage of dust which can cause infections the floor should be damp proof that is from the ground water and the height of the plinth should be 2 to 3 feet and hence a mud floor is not satisfactory the plinth should be 2 to 3 feet as mentioned in the previous slide what is plinth plinth is the depth of the floor below the surface and this should be 2 to 3 feet the walls should be reasonably strong with low heat capacity the rash should not be able to make holes in it not easily damaged and should be smooth these standards are satisfied by a 9 inch brick wall plastered smooth and painted cream or white the roof the roof should be not less than 10 feet from the floor this is for providing adequate ventilation this is considering that there is no intention for air conditioning in the house and the roof should have low heat transmittance coefficient floor area the total floor area of the living room should be at least 120 square feet if more than one person is to occupy it and for a single person occupancy this area should be at least 100 square feet as per the volume recommended is at least 5000 cubic feet per capita preferably 1000 cubic feet and this is for proper ventilation and again it is keeping in mind that mechanical replacement of air is not being provided the purpose of recommendation for windows is to provide adequate ventilation and lighting every living room should have at least two windows and at least one of these should open directly to the open space the windows should not be at a height more than 3 feet above the ground and total window area in a room should be at least 1/5 of the floor area and doors and windows area combined should be at least 2/5 of the floor area again this is keeping in mind that there is no intention of providing mechanical ventilation and artificial lighting lighting whatever is the source of lighting the illumination should be 30 times higher than the level at which the intended task can just be done care should be taken that the lighting is sufficient and uniform yet without glare and as near as possible to the color of the daylight the color of the ceiling and walls should be such that the reflection factor of the ceiling should be 80% and that of the walls 50 to 60% the furniture should reflect around 30 to 40% and the reflection from the floor should not be much it should not be more than 15 to 20% the kitchen of the house every house should have a separate kitchen the kitchen should have a smoke outlet and should have adequate light there should be adequate space for storing food and fuel adequate water supply a sink for washing utensils proper drainage and the floor must be impervious privy privy is in other words a latrine A sanitary privy is a must in every house. What is a sanitary privy will be dealt with in detail in a separate lecture on sanitation. Right now, 
it suffices to say that it is a sanitary latrine it is a must in every house it should be inside the house and should belong exclusively to the house not to be shared between two or more houses the refusal of garbage should be at least daily and in a sanitary manner bathing and washing the house should have adequate facilities which should belong exclusively to the house and should provide adequate privacy the water supply should be safe and adequate and available at all times otherwise the inmates would go out and may source unsafe water the housing standards in the rural areas have been lowered a little bit there should be at least two living rooms with ample veranda space the built up area should not be more than one third of the total land area but the kitchen should be separate and should have a paved sink or a paved platform for washing utensils the latrine should again be sanitary should be present inside the house and belong exclusively to the house the window area should be at least 10% of the floor area there should be a sanitary well or a tube well within 1/4 of a mile otherwise the family members may source water from a potentially unsafe source the kettle shed should be at least 25 feet away from the dwelling the kettle shed should be open on all the sides with an area of at least 8 by 4 feet per kettle and disposable disposal of water and refuse should be adequate and sanitary what can poor housing do poor housing predisposes to respiratory infections spread of skin infections rat infestation which has been associated with plague outbreaks infestation and breeding of orthopods which can be vectors for various diseases accidents due to poor lighting or unsafe structure poor housing has been associated with higher morbidity that is higher illness higher rates of mortality and can even have psychological effects in the inmates overcrowding one of the major concerns is when do we call that overcrowding is present in the house because overcrowding predisposes the inmates of a house to various infectious diseases and health problems there are three criteria to define overcrowding and if any one of these criteria are satisfied overcrowding is considered to be present in the house the three criteria are number one persons per room per capita floor space and sex separation persons per room we shall discuss in the next slide floor space is measured by measuring the floor area of the living rooms of all the rooms excluding the kitchen bathroom etc and divide this total area by the calculated number of occupants the third criteria is sex separation which means that two persons of opposite sex both over 9 year old and not related by marriage are obliged to sleep in the same room obliged means that there is no other option because of space constraint they have to sleep in the same room so this is the criteria of sex separation a persons per room criteria as we discussed mentioned in the previous slide in one room there should be two persons two rooms three persons and so on till five rooms have 10 persons and for each additional room after five rooms we can add two persons to 10 floor space we calculate the floor space as explained previously and divided by the calculated number of occupants calculated number we say because a child who is less than 1 year of age is not counted as a person and a child between 1 to 10 years of age is counted as half a person and then above 10 years of age person is counted as one person how does overcrowding affect health it does so by restricted movement privacy is not granted 
hence hygiene becomes impossible and rest and sleep become difficult so health problems due to these can be infectious diseases spread of infectious diseases like tuberculosis influenza diphtheria especially respiratory diseases and the psychological effects on health due to overcrowding and irritability frustration lack of sleep anxiety violence mental disorders organizations in india which work in the area of housing these are under the ministry of works and housing there are four such organizations national building organization national building construction corporation limited housing and urban development corporation popularly known as hudco and hindustan housing factory they deal with various aspects of housing and work under the ministry of works and housing government of india